from my senior year of high school through my sophomore year of college, I had three back-to-back-to-back um, season-ending knee injuries. Um, I had played in, in very few competitive soccer games, and uh, there were some moments in there where I definitely considered, you know what, this whole soccer thing is, is not for me. I'll go do something different. Welcome back to another episode of Kingdom Heirs, where faith meets business, inspiring the kingdom-minded entrepreneur. Today, I've got the great privilege of having with me Kate Wiesner, the professional soccer player who was drafted number seven overall from Washington Spirit in 2024 in the NWSL draft. Five years at Penn State, six goals, 18 assists, 59 starts, 71 appearances, Two game-winning goals in 2023 over Maryland, Indiana. Welcome to the show, Kate. Thanks for being here. Thanks, James. I'm super excited to be here and excited for what this conversation has in store. All right. Well, I appreciate you being patient. Uh, Our guests will realize this is the very first uh, uh, podcast we've done with a Zoom call. So I'm just super excited about that, that you're our first guest like this. So thank you for being willing to to come on our show. Absolutely. Happy, Happy to be a little bit of a trailblazer here. Ah, okay, I like that trailblazer. I love it. So, Kate, uh, you and I had a chance to talk prior to the uh, to this to our time right now, and uh, just listening to you, um, you you are a, a young adult who is who's already hit the pros. So I'm I'm super excited about that. Uh, you are a uh, California native, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what what town were you born and raised in? I'm originally from Monrovia, California, a little town just outside of Los Angeles. All right. Excellent. Um, you were drafted to the Washington Spirit. And the, when when was the draft? Was just, uh, let me see here, let my news. Was it uh, in January? Yeah, January, um, just about a month ago. Um, and yeah, it was actually in Anaheim, California, so not too far from my hometown. Um, so it was a really cool event. My folks got to be there, uh, experience that moment with me. And um, yeah, it was just a really cool step, uh, I think, in my life and my career as a soccer player. It's a huge deal. Uh, do you have siblings? I do not. It's just me. I am. Oh, the- you're you're the only the only wonder child of the family. I guess. I guess you're, they you're get on the first try. So they. Uh, to- your your parents are probably saying we should have had more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but who, what else what else they may have accomplished right i love that the um so you spent five years at penn state and was that you know and when you graduated did you finish in moravia did you finish high school there i did i finished high school in monrovia um yeah okay started at penn state in the fall of 2019 um oh, wow through COVID, before covid before covid yeah um so COVID was part of the reason why i took that that extra fifth year, um, extra season. And, um, yeah, just, just graduated in May, finished up playing last December and, um, yeah, now ready to rock and roll in the pros. I love that. I love that. Your time, uh, why Penn state? Um, Penn state is a, is a really special place. Uh, I think took a couple of visits as I was being recruited in high school, but, um, the moment that I stepped on campus, I, uh, I fell in love with the school uh, and the coaching staff and, um, really just a, a great culture um, amongst the team. Um, and I wanted to be somewhere where I was surrounded by some really good soccer players, but some really exceptional human beings as well. And um, that's what I found at Penn State. And I'm so, so happy that that God led me there. I love that. You know, um, somebody commented here, one of the toughest women in the game, one of the most brilliant talents Penn State has ever seen. That's that's a big deal. Uh, it says here, Washington uh, Kate uh, uh, Wiesner is all you could ever hope for in a player, person, and teammate. Congratulations, Wheezy. Is that your nickname? <laughs> it is. Most most people at Penn State call me Wheezy. Uh, I love it. That's super cool. So, you know, your time at Penn State, um, most people, you know this, most people don't don't ever hit the pros. And most people don't ever get into college ball. Right. So most people's careers kind of end in high school. And and so from there, I'm curious your story. You know, how did you get started? Um, Why soccer? Why not something else? Um, 
you know, was it was it something that your parents said, hey, this is what you got to do. And this is where this is where you're headed. You're going to be a pro one day. And, you know, were they, you know, over dominating parents? Like what what was your what was your drive uh, in life to get you to where you're at right now? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really blessed. I grew up with a, a pretty incredible set of parents. Um, my dad actually played soccer collegiately at a small division three school. Uh, up in Northern California. So it was always going to be the, the first sport that I tried as a kid. Awesome. I love that. And yeah, I think I just kind of fell in love with it. Um, I mean, I remember lots of epic uh, backyard battles with my dad um, playing to, to just little pop-up goals, um, barefoot on the grass. And we'd be out there from after school until the sun went down, just kicking a ball around. And that's where my love of the game, I think, really started. Um, and yeah, he was just, he was super competitive, the two of us. Um, my mom always jokes that she has two kids. One of them's my dad and one of them's me. Um, I love that. I but, love that. But we had a lot of fun back there and and really just like those moments, those small moments in the backyard are really kind of like the foundation, I think, of my career. Um, and the rest of it was just born out of that love, that pure love of the game um, that, that started as a kid. And, and that's still like, to this day is a huge driving factor for me. Like whenever, you know, it's a lot of work being, being a pro, but um, if I'm ever yeah. feeling a bit bogged down from, from training or, Hey, I don't want to be this day. Like that's kind of the, the picture that I think of just like me as a little girl playing in the backyard with my dad. Um, and that is why I still do what I do today. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. It's, it's always about how you feel when you play the sport and, and what, uh, what the nostalgia is that comes to uh, to mind, and and so to your point, you're right, and and that that relational level with dad and mom cheering on, and so oh, well, they're having fun because that's got to be a beautiful sight too for mom to watch uh, her daughter and and just enjoying her time with her dad, and especially something that uh, that flows so well. So, you know, with dad playing, and now you're playing, uh, but you, did you ever feel that that um, that pressure that if you don't continue on, you would disappoint your parents or disappoint your dad, maybe. Cause I know a lot of people have that sense, especially with sports, right? Totally. I think that, that that's always a little bit of an interesting dynamic between, um, parent and kid anytime you're in a competitive sport. Um, but really like, I think my parents did a pretty incredible job of letting me know that, um, whether or not, you know, this career worked out, like from a very young age, I had the dream of, I want to be a pro. Um, That's cool. Whether or not this worked out, like they were still going to just love me for me um, as who I was, regardless of, of what I achieved on the soccer field or what I didn't achieve on the soccer field. Um, and I think kind of now I didn't really realize how powerful that was when I was younger. Um, it was just like, oh, my, my parents love me. This is good. Um, but now I think being a little bit older and, and looking back on that, like it's pretty incredible what they did in the environment that they fostered where I was free to, to go for the goals that I wanted to. And they were pushing me and they were driving me, but also free to fail. Um, and still be that's there. good. Um, and I think like now, like what an incredible reflection of kind of the way that the love of God works too. Um, like, yes, obviously he, he wants us to, to go for these things and, um, dream big. And, and I believe that, um, but man, like when we mess up, what what gracious arms we fall back into. Um, and I feel really lucky that I got got to see the heart of my father through the heart of, of my parents. Wow. That OK. So you just encompassed the goal. I think that all parents um, should strive for is to share, to live out the heart of of God um, to our children, how we love on them, how we how we uh, discipline them in love how we bind them up, how we hold them, how we restore them, how we encourage them as, how we, as we push them to move forward towards greatness and towards um, our personal best, right? That's beautiful. That's That that there could be a whole show right there, right? <laughs> and, and, the, and the fact that you, the fact that you recognize that now, because that's mm -hmm. huge. That's, I think that's probably one of the greatest gifts that, that, uh, that you have is just to be able to see that, that beauty there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, like, like I said, really blessed. And, and now I think hopefully we got a little bit of ways to go, but as I kind of start to go and, and have a family of my own, like those are yeah. the characteristics that I want to emulate in raising. That's my the key. That's the key. I love that. Uh, it's, it's having vision for your life, 
uh, even now as a young adult, having vision for your life, a, a pro athlete, what is what do I want my life to look like? Um, and and what do I want people to see in my life? And because you know we know that we're on pedestals, and as soon as you hit a, a level of of high success, and and hitting the pros is high success. And so, you know what people see, um, you know the good, bad, and the ugly. You know, but really it's it's they see I have a heart that that wants to be loving. I have a heart that wants to show kindness and goodness and mercy. But I also have a heart of determination to do my absolute best. Uh, and what I put my hand and what I put my foot to, uh, I'm going to do my very best. Right. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I think like for me, a lot of my career, like, um, part of it has been getting uncomfortable, um, and, and putting myself in environments and situations where I wasn't the best player on the team. Um, I wasn't the most experienced player on the team. Um, and like, getting into these moments where I was being stretched and pushed and pulled in all the right ways. And I think like God has not called us to live this easy, comfortable life where, Oh, I'm the best part on my team. Everything's great. Um, wow. Yeah. Like let's, let's get into situations where I'm being forced to grow. Um, and I think that kind of having that mindset has helped me so much, not just in my, my playing career, but in my life as well. Right. Like let me surround myself with That's right. people of high character who are stretching me to be a better human, to be a better follower of Jesus. Um, And I think that that's so powerful and so important is to get in rooms with people who have more wisdom than you, have more experience than you, and to learn and grasp from those people. That's huge. That's a great point. Um, Getting around uh, people that have walked the road already, uh, the older folks uh, in our community, in our in our in our in our world, you know, they've they've already walked the journey. They've they're doing it, and as their journey comes to an end, and as they're pressing on towards eternity, you know, gleaning from them life experiences is huge, right? And I've I've always said I would I I rather be around people that have a true heart for Jesus, have a great heart for the Father and for the kingdom, who are successful, than someone who's just filthy rich, who's you know who's a billionaire, who's done, done great, but they don't have a relationship with the father. So I feel as though, you know, you could look at things like what they've accomplished and say, man, yeah, wow, they accomplished, they accomplished some big things, noteworthy things. But, you know, in the end, do they have the heart of the father? And because if they do, they would have lived life in such a way that I can glean something from them of how they journeyed with God. It's like Abraham, Abraham walked with walked with God, Moses walked with God, right? And so I think that's the key thing. And they were very wealthy. Abraham, super wealthy guy, right? I mean, if you really consider his wealth, uh, it's billionaire, if you consider t- of today's standards, right? So I think that's that's kind of the heart of all things is how we how we live things out. And so, you know, tips for um, from you and, and what you've kind of walked out already, what kind of tips do you have or advice would you share other than having a great mentor, um, you know, that for other young adults uh, who are listening you know, can apply to their life so that they can aspire to hit their dream of being a pro athlete. Totally. Yeah. I think for me, um, the, the big part of, of, you know, like stretching yourself, getting uncomfortable is, is big. Um, I come back to, I love the story of, um, Peter walking on water. Like I think (laughs) a lot of times Peter gets a bad rap in that story because, you know, for a moment he took his eyes off Jesus and, and, uh, he starts sinking, but like, the courage that it took just for him to get out of the boat. Um, I feel like we don't, we don't give him enough credit for that. And I think there are wow. times in my life where like, I can look back and see, Hey, maybe Jesus was calling me to step out of the boat. And I was like, Oh no, nah, it's pretty comfy back here though. I think the, the boats yeah. look good. Um, and then times where I feel like God has called me out of the boat and I said, all right, God, I'm, I'm jumping in the water. Like, let's go. Um, and so for me, like, finding the courage and the faith to just step out of the boat. Um, yeah. And then Jesus will take care of the rest. Um, but it's that that first step of let's leave these spaces that are nice and cozy and comfortable and let's put ourselves um, to go to go to new places that God is calling us to go. Uh, so well said, you know, push ourselves out of the comfort zone. Um, I, for one, am someone who uh, needs to exercise. I want to exercise. I tell myself I need to get to the gym, right? 
And then I then immediately I was like, yeah, I need to do that. I need to lose weight and everything else, right? But then I'm like, but then my knee hurts. But then my hand hurts. And if I go, then I'll have to then I'll feel the my pain my the pain in my knee is going to come back. So, but I know that if I push through the pain, eventually it goes away. So I know that as well, right? So how do how do you get someone to get out of that comfortable? Because right now I'm comfortable. I'm happy, right? So the question is, how do you get someone from that that comfortable, comfy place, as you mentioned, to the point where they're back in the gym, they're back doing the drills, they're back focusing themselves? How do you kind of like get kicked out of the nest, so to speak? What do you, what do you suggest for that? Um, I think that's the hardest part, right? Is is just literally starting. Um, getting started. Getting yeah. started. And I think that um, once we take that first step, like we often don't realize what's waiting for us on the other side of that step. Um, and so for me, like what motivates me is the excitement of like what God could have for me that's better than what I currently have. Um, and like, I'm a big believer that um, like what is coming, that what God has for me is better than what is in my past. And so I, good. if we hold that to our core, the excitement of like, oh, I can't even imagine all of the good things that God has in store for me. Let's go towards them. And I think that that almost like pull towards what God has needs to be what's getting us to take that first step rather than our clinging to what we think is good that we have right now. Wow. Yeah, that's so well said. Um, Because even if what we have right now is good, um, it, our God, if we, you know, as we're walking in relationship with Him, what He has for us is better. It's, yeah. it, it's you go from glory to glory, strength to strength. It just keeps getting better and better, uh, versus just sitting tight and just kind of celebrating this one victory that we had. And well, dude, you've been celebrating that victory you had. That victory was like ten years ago. Like, right. have you had any? Have you had any other victories? Well, well, this one was so great. I don't need any others. No. <laughs> No, you need more victories in your life because you can see how God moves in your life as you step out and push yourself through, right? Push yourself forward. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no, I always, I had someone say to me too, um, right? Like, I think for me anyway, I think of my my soccer career and, and the gifts and the abilities that God has given me as kind of this, he's planted this seed, this talent, this dream um, inside me, but it's up to me to water it and nurture it so that it grows. That's good. If I'm just sitting on, on that promise, but not actually doing anything to cultivate it, then it's not going to grow. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, That's and I good. think that so often, like people will say, Oh, if it's for me, like God will make it happen. And then they're not actually doing anything to get to that, making it happen point. Um, yeah. And then they get disappointed. They get upset. They get jaded. They're like, oh, you know, I'm just a nobody. God really didn't speak to me. No, you're still on the shore. You never even stepped. You never even put your boat in the water. You, you don't even have oars. You're not even trying to row. You don't right. even have a sail. Like, what are you doing? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there's a, a big whiteboard in, in my dad's office and, and on it, at the top of it, it says God is not in the business of rewarding the lazy. Um, uh. And, I love that. I, I kind of loved it, right? Um, yes. And uh, Sounds like your dad and I would get along. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. He doesn't reward the lazy. Actually, the, the, there's a lot of verses that say that um, they're slothful, wasteful people that, that really are, they're, they're feeling like they're, why aren't you caring for me? Well, why, well, why aren't you caring for yourself? Mm-hmm. Right. Do the work, put the work in, and then you'll see the fruit of your labor. Um, what kind of hurdles have you had to overcome in this journey to become a pro? Um, yeah, so I think that in anybody's career, you're, you're going to hit adversity. Um, it's it's part of what we do. It's part of life. It's part of soccer, that's for sure. Um, for me, um, that adversity has come in the form of, of injuries. Um, mm-hmm. I had... From my senior year of high school through my sophomore year of college, um, I had three back-to-back-to-back um, season-ending knee injuries. And mm-hmm. so there's a stretch of, of almost three years where um, I had played in, in very few competitive soccer games. And uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a time where um, God was, was testing and, and stretching my faith a lot. Um, and... There were some moments in there where I definitely considered, you know what, 
this whole soccer thing is, is not for me. I'll go do something different. Um, but now kind of being a couple years removed and, and looking back in hindsight, like what a blessing that time has been. Um, and how much have I seen my faith grow, um, through yeah. that, that period of trial. Um, yeah, like I can, can remember, um, after my third surgery, just kind of throwing my hands up a little bit and being like, God, I'm done. Like, yeah, I want something else for me. So be it. But like, this isn't I'm done. Well, and, and, and a lot of times those surgeries, um, like an ACL, uh, it, I mean, those surgeries don't guarantee that you're going to be able to perform. Right. And right. so how have you been able to, uh, what type of surgeries, what, what, what did you tear? Um, so I've had two, two ACL injuries, um, and then a meniscus, separate meniscus. Injury. And meniscus. Yeah. So, so those are really hard to overcome. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can, but to the point though, I mean, they, they say, look, it, it might be not, not run for a year. Like there's like a lot of things that the doctors tell you. Um, and, and so I know that that's always like, oh my goodness, well, should I even do the surgery? Right. Should I, should I just try to do strengthening and right. But you guys opted for the surgery. Um, yeah, I did. I think it was kind of, if you want to keep playing, like this is something that we need to do. Um, and, and so we did it. And I think it's been really cool just to kind of see the healing power of God over me through that time. Yeah. Yes. I can say like, without a doubt that probably my, my third surgery, like should have ended my career. Um, and yet God was like, no, I'm not, I'm not done with you yet. Ah, I love that. Strengthen those knees. I get it. No, knees are, whoo. <laughs> um, so important in what you're doing. Yeah. So what, kind of, what kind of strength, what kind of strengthening do you guys do on a regular basis? Like your workouts and like, what do you guys do for conditioning? Yeah, we, we do a good amount of lifting. Um, probably in the off season, three to four times a week, uh, changes a little bit when, when we're in season playing games. Um, but yeah, I think it's been interesting kind of throughout my career a little bit. Um, the sports science piece has really, um, taken it up a notch. Like, okay, what are we doing? in the gym to prevent these type of injuries on the field. Yes, that's right. That's right. And so it's been kind of cool to see um, the later I'm getting in my career, the more that's being invested in, okay, how can we keep players safe? How can we keep players on the field? Um, and so that's really encouraging. And I think that I'm lucky to be in a really, really cool environment in Washington now where there's a lot of research and a lot of resources poured into that. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's been, been really cool to kind of see that evolution throughout my career. I love that. No, I agree. Uh, uh, industry, um, it continues to, uh, innovation continues to just kind of like flood our industries, even in the construction industry. We we continue to see it. Uh, and so I love that it's, you keep taking technology and just keep adding it to all the different things that we're doing. It's, it is a lot of fun to see the development of, like you said, even just workouts. And so you can strengthen your knees and how do we do that in the, in the workout room versus on the field, right? Um, one of the things I was wondering, other than your father and, and your mother, do you have other another um, mentor or someone that you looked up to uh, to get you to where you're at today? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think um, I've been lucky to be surrounded by um, a lot of great men and women of faith in my life, um, particularly um, one of my pastors um, from my church back home in Monrovia, um, Pastor Rob. Um, he he and my dad have become good friends um over the years and um he's kind of taken on almost a a second father figure um form for me um, and uh we always joke that the rest of us have to take the stairs but uh pastor rob's got an elevator up to the big man um he's, <laughs> he's on the express route but um i love it just what what a man of faith um, and just kind of hearing his story and some of the obstacles that he's had to overcome. Um, it's been really, really inspiring for me. Um, and just his encouragement and support of, of my dreams um, as a form of worship for the kingdom. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Like he's encouraged me to, to pursue this career for the right reasons, um, not for the personal glory or the fame that comes with it. Oh, I'm a pro, that's yes. cool, but... No, right. I'm this because God has given me a gift and I'm going to worship and honor him with that gift to the best of my ability. I love it. Um, Man, so well said. Uh, talk about platform. 
uh, our pastor, Pastor Mike, um, one of the things that he talks a lot about is use the platform you have and and just start sharing. You know, you, you don't need to be standing on a stage and waiting to be on a stage so you can start sharing. That is so like reverse uh, mindset, right? It's whatever platform you have, use it for the glory of God. Use it, share, share your story, right? Share share where you've been tested in life and, and your testimony that came from it. Show where life got messy and how it became a message, right? I mean, that's, that's really what... Um, you know, so that's great advice from Pastor Rob. That's great advice. And and now you have the same opportunity to kind of keep resharing that because now you're walking it out because it's real for you. Right. Right. Yeah. I love that. That's so important. The, um, you know, looking at your, the, uh, the platform that you have and, and how, you know, you're, you're really a great example to young adults who have strived, overcome some adversity, um, had a really good focus. You have a good trajectory of what you're looking towards. Um, what are some of your goals that you have? You know, what are you looking to accomplish in, in your life and what do you want to see? Um, yeah, that that's a great question. Um, I think for me kind of um, throughout college, um, the let's, let's go play professional soccer. That was um, definitely a big one for me. And so um, I think kind of now that I'm here, um, what can I do to, to sort of um, establish myself in the league and, and be an impact player here in Washington and um, yeah, kind of, kind of climb that ladder a little bit. Um, but for me, honestly, like the success on the field is great. Um, and, and obviously oh, yeah. I work, work really hard for that, but um, that, that is secondary to, uh, to the work that I'm doing for the kingdom. Um, and I think that my goal in any environment that I am is just um, to be a light for Jesus um, and to show his love um, to the people around me. And I think um, I'm in a new environment here in Washington where hopefully I have an opportunity to do that and really just um, speak life over my teammates, speak life over yes. well, I'm next to my apartment complex. Like that is the purpose that I wake up with every day. Um, I love that. How, how can I be a light in this, this pretty dark world that we're living in? Um, and how can I be, be a reflection of Jesus to those around me? Um, and really like, that's the greatest purpose that I could ever ask for. Um, so true. Yeah, that's huge. That's, that's a life focus. It's mm -hmm. a life focus. When, when we focus our life in that, in that direction, um, it's amazing what starts pouring into your life. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, all right, this is my girl. This is this is what I, I've got planned for you. And and you're ready. You're you're already engaging. You're like, yep, let's let's just keep adding and adding flame to the uh, adding wind to the fire. You know, you keep flaming the fire. Um, you know, I'm wondering about uh, you know, what it's like with your teammates, um <clears throat> coming from a coming from did was there much of a gap between your Penn State and your draft getting to the team? Was there just timing wise? Yeah, no, just just about a month, honestly. Maybe a little wow. bit. So it was a pretty, pretty quick transition. Yeah. When did you graduate Penn State? Um, I graduated in May, but I, I finished playing in December. Um, okay. So that's how that works. Let's go. Yep. Yep. Okay. So um, any other, any other teammates make the team with you? Um, we have a couple of Penn Staters at, at other teams in the league. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. Five players actually get drafted out of Penn State this year. Um, wow. Awesome. But I'm the only one that ended up here in Washington. Okay, cool. Have you played uh, overseas? I have not. I've traveled a little bit to play, um, but never, never like lived overseas and played there for an extended period of time. But you have, but you have played overseas. Where yeah. have you played? Um, I traveled, traveled quite a bit um, when I was in high school, playing for some youth national teams. Um, so yeah, been been a couple of places in Europe, uh, been to China a couple of times, um, South America a little bit, Argentina, uh, Mexico. Um, yeah, I went to, um, Jordan actually for the U17 world cup, uh, in 2016. So, um, yeah, I, I got to travel all over the place a little bit in high school, which was, um, a ton of fun. Mind, mind blowing changes perspective, right? Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, is that something that you hope to do again in the future? Um, yeah, I hope so. We'll, we'll see where God takes me, but, um, yeah, I think that there will be some potential opp opportunities overseas and, um, yeah, hopefully the chance to, to travel a little bit and, and get to do that again. 
I love it. How many how many games do you guys play this year? How many games will you play? Um, we play twenty eight games, twenty seven games regular season. Um, from March to no- November ish, and then um, hopefully we'll we'll make the playoffs and have a good postseason run. So get a handful more more games then. I love it. And then, uh, do you guys bus? Do you guys fly? Um, yeah, I mean the the league is is coast to coast and everywhere in the middle. So um, we will mostly fly. Um, we, we might bus up to the New York New York team for a game, but um, other than that, I think we're flying pretty much anywhere. Do you have any? Um, <clears throat> do you have any players in the in the? Um, do you have any players that you hope to meet? You know, as as you play cross, as you cross the lines, you start seeing other teams, your opponents. Is there anybody that you're really hoping you get a chance to meet? Um, yeah, I think there are some some really exciting um, players to play against in the league. Uh, one of my Penn State teammates is down in Orlando. Um, she has the opportunity to play alongside Marta from Brazil, who's arguably the greatest of all time in our sport. Um, and so I'm excited to hopefully get the chance to uh, share a field with her. Um, uh, and yeah, I think they're. <clears throat> U.S. national team kind of legends who are all over the league and um, players that I watched as a little kid growing up and um, now get to to play against them. So that'll be fun. That's awesome. That's always fun. I, I always find it uh, fun when when teams meet and players, they cross the field and they, after the game's over and they're like, hey, hugging on each other. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. You know, you're like your, your enemies across the, as you're playing, but like your friends once it's over. And it's like, I love that flip. You know, it's so much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we're the cool thing about the, the league in the U.S. actually is that there's really just like a lot of support across team lines. I think like um, there's been so much growth in the league itself over the past 10 years um, and lots of, of players who have kind of blazed the trail for us to come in and be able to have this as a, a legitimate career and, and make a living out of it. So um, I think there's just a lot of camaraderie amongst um the women who have been here before me and that has kind of continued on through, through my generation of players. And so that's why you see, I think a lot of the hugs and, and love after the game. Cause um, I think the league as a whole has kind of been fighting for um, to get to the place that it's at now. Um, and yeah. so it's, it'll be a part of. That's cool. That's very cool. Hey, what'd you study at Penn state? I studied journalism. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. What, what was the, what was the reason choice for journalism? Um, I love to write. That is my my passion outside of soccer. Um, so that was kind of why why I picked the major and got to write a lot of stories and um, meet meet a lot of cool folks. And I think my favorite thing apart about the major is just like I love taking stories of of kind of unexpected people who are doing cool things behind the scenes and getting to shed a little bit of light on the difference that that they're making in our communities. I love that. No, that 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 will never stop. Mm-hmm. Keep on doing it. I, I love the fact that you you're writing and and uh, journalism, right? Have you ever submitted any of your pieces to like be published? Um, I wrote a little bit for our, for a local school paper during COVID, um, so I got a, a couple of stories published in there. That's cool. Well, come on, you can you can have like your your journal, your secret blog. You could be blogging about your experience and and what it's like to be uh, Washington Spirit on the team and, and what you guys are doing. They probably need someone to to write their pieces for them. Probably. <laughs> and and you'll probably do the better job. You uh, probably do it, you know, from from your position, your your perspective of the field. Sure. Right. Hey, um, you know, as we as we wrap up our call, you know, one of the things that I'm curious is, you know, uh, social issues. Um, you know, things in life that, that, that you're kind of passionate about. Uh, is there anything that, that you've got any causes or things that you're really wanting to kind of champion, um, in your life? Um, I think for me, like the coolest thing about, um, about sport is being able to use that as a vehicle to reach people. Um, and whether that's through our platform or through just a shared love of the game. Um, and so in my time at Penn state, um, I think I really tried to make an effort to connect with our community through the game, um, right? Yes. We share this this love of this one thing um, and kind of how can we use that as a vehicle to, to teach people about Jesus um, and to show people um, what it means to be loved and valued. Um, and so at the moment, I don't have any specific organizations that I'm working with, um, 
but that is my heart and my dream eventually to be able to, to connect those two um, and really just build kind of a special relationship between the game um, and, and the love of Christ and, and be able to use that as a way to reach people. It is. I mean, I know um, it really is. We, we've we gone to, um, my family and I, we've done a lot of time, spent a lot of time in South Africa, Mozambique, and um, <clears throat> our one of our last trips in July, I, uh, you know, my, me and the twins were there, uh, Michaela and Giovanna, and we purchased, I don't know, like 30 soccer balls, mm. right? Footballs, footballs. And uh, we purchased them in South Africa, and we then uh, brought them to, we brought them to the different locations that we were uh, speaking at, and, and we were holding like revival services and cooking a ton of food for all these different places that we were traveling to, and, um, and a tent set up. It was a ton of fun. What a cool experience. And I brought these soccer balls and I was bringing them and, and giving them out to the kids. And the faces, their faces were just like a brand new soccer ball is huge. Like that is like, that's a piece of gold in their hands, right? Yeah. It's a huge deal. And, um, you know, because they don't have, you know, like the, the soccer balls they, that they'll use, you might see like a tattered ball, literally, that doesn't have a skin on it anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. Or uh, in Mozambique, which was really cool. Uh, in 2018, we brought um, one soccer ball to Mozambicans and we had um, they had a, a, a wadded up newspaper soccer ball. Wow! It was just wadded up and they had string. They strung it all up like it was wrapped up, tied up. And I was like, what in the world is that? And so I, I brought them a soccer ball and just one. And there was like 30 kids. And I'm like, ah, just one. I said, I'm a fool. What am I doing? So I brought back, I don't know how many we brought, 10, 12, and we brought them back. But I told the South Africans, this is pretty funny. I told the sports store where we were buying all the, the you know, the, the sports gear. I said, hey, I said, these South African footballs, we're going to bring them to Mozambique, give them to the kids so that the Mozambique team can beat South Africa. You know? <laughs> so we're, so like these Mozambicans are using the South African soccer balls to, to beat you. And they were like, no, it became like this huge deal. No way, never, no. It was so funny, man. It was, it was, it was hilarious. But to your point, though, uh, that you're making, there's people that just they need to rally. They need something to take their mind off of the hardships that they're experiencing in life, right? And sport is one of the number one ways to do that. Sports, the arts, dramas, music, something that will take their mind off of their hard situation that they're enduring, they're going through. Uh, and sport is a great way to rally around and find camaraderie, support, uh, friendships. And so, but it's also a great way to bring in uh, the just a loving message, right? Of how much our father loves us. And so I think you with that, it's, it's perfect. And um, I'm pretty excited to see what God's going to do in your life. And I know there's a lot of people who are rooting you on and uh, cheering for you to, to score as many goals as you can and uh, as many assists as you can. And, um, and we know you've already got a great record of doing that. And so congratulations on your, on your accomplishment. We know there's many more accomplishments on the way. And uh, the big thing is that you're winning at life as well. Right. You're winning in life. And, um, you know, with you and your relationship that you've got with your parents, which is, I think, an awesome foundation right there. Uh, them leading you to having a relationship with the, the King of Kings is powerful. And it really kind of gives you the fuel you need to do whatever you need to accomplish in life. Right. Right. You know, it's pretty, pretty easy. One, two, three, equal, you know, one, two, equal one plus one equals two. Right. It's an easy equation. Mm-hmm. So is there anything uh, you want to share just before we we, uh, we kick off here? Any last things you want to say or contribute? Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think so. Um, it's been a, been a pleasure talking to you and um, kind of just unpacking this a little bit. Um, I think it's it's really incredible what you guys are doing and, and the messages that you are putting out um, for the kingdom. And I'm happy to, to have been a part of that um, and hope to continue doing that um, here in Washington as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to include your uh, your socials and um, just how people can kind of follow you and, and connect with you uh, in the link. Uh, also, uh, thank you for uh, for being here with us. Uh, so, hey, guys, if you've liked what you just saw, uh, if you would like, subscribe and ring the bell. Uh, share Kate's story with your friends. Uh, let people know that you can dream with God and you can reach 
uh, big, big accomplishments, big, big things that you've got set before you. But if you're lazy, you're not going to accomplish it. Right. So uh, that's that's from the words of Kate. So and her Kate's dad. Right. God doesn't uh, reward the lazy. So I think that's a great message. Um, and so thank you guys for being here. Uh, we love you guys. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>